Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So this week's video is for the newbie puppy parents and I wanted to put together a video and give my five top tips for new puppy owners and hopefully this will give you a little bit of peace of mind, a little bit of reassurance and guidance if you are just about to get a puppy or if you've got your puppy and you just want kind of a little bit of direction or if you're just feeling a bit frustrated <laughs> and, and kind of wondering like what to do. I know that having a puppy is a lot of work. Our puppy is now seven months old. I call him a puppy, but like he doesn't look like one. He looks like a fully grown dog. Let me show you. He's just here. Give me a puppy. Give me a. Oh, here he is. This is my not so tiny puppy, Fino. <laughs> Bless him. He is absolutely pooped. We went um, to the beach, he had a good swim, then we had a bath. You want to sit down? Okay. Um, so yeah, he's seven months old. He is a red golden retriever. He's a field retriever so he is more of like a working golden he is like super athletic got lots of energy he's a really really strong swimmer he loves the ocean and it's honestly just been like the best journey with him if you've watched a lot of my videos before then you know you've probably seen him feature a lot he's in like every single video but if not then i'll leave his instagram in the description box down below if you want to go and check that out we post lots of cutie photos with him and i took a lot of um like vlogs and videos especially around the beginning when we got him when we were like shopping for him and everything and it's honestly just been the best and training him as well has been so much fun and this time has gone so quickly so i should actually add a bonus tip in because i've got a few tips written down on my phone but I should add a bonus tip which is like take millions of pictures I thought we took millions of pictures and now I look back and I'm like we hardly took any like that time from when they're a puppy to like say now it just goes so fast they grow so quickly they change so fast and yeah cherish the time of having your teeny little puppy because i promise you it will absolutely fly by so i've been actually getting a lot of questions recently about you know what it's like having a puppy what to expect and a lot of questions as well from puppy owners who um are just a little bit frustrated and like wondering what they're doing wrong or just just kind of at their wits end because you know it's hard work having a puppy and that's that's what i say to anyone who messages me is like you're already doing an amazing job because having a puppy is hard it requires so much time so much energy so much patience like they, they suck up all of your energy. And I remember at the beginning when we had Fino, I was just exhausted all the time, even though he was actually really, really good at night. And um, I think it was like, I don't know, a week in and he was sleeping all night. Even though he wasn't waking up in the night, I was still exhausted because like, it's a huge distraction and it's really hard working while having a puppy in the house. And so, yeah, it is um, a lot of work. It's obviously the most rewarding thing ever, but I feel like not many people talk about how difficult it is having a puppy and um, all the pictures that I'd see on Instagram of like golden retrievers would just be like cutie little goldens and they'd be like so well behaved and just so sleepy and cute and I feel like we missed that kind of lazy useless puppy face because when we got Fino he was uh, eight weeks old he weighed eight kilos he was very energetic he was extremely confident he was big eight kilos is big for an eight week old puppy um so we kind of missed that little useless puppy stage and he was he was a boy when we got him but yeah he is like super confident he's got so much personality but because he's quite confident you know we've tried to be as strict as possible with him also with him being a big dog he's now about 70 no no seven maybe six, 66 pounds maybe now um at seven months so i reckon he'll get up to about 80 but with him being a big dog you know I want him to be very very well behaved I want to be able to control him I don't want him to be just you know running off and not listening to me because he's big and not everyone likes dogs and you know we want to take him to all these places and travel with him and whatnot so yeah we put a lot of time and energy into the training and into raising him and I feel like it's really paid off and he's just such a good dog now. Okay so let's jump into the tips because I want this to be quite a short and sweet video so tip number one is be patient. <laughs> and I know it's often difficult when, you know, your puppy is just being a little terror because that's what they do. They have little terror phases. And when they're not listening to you, like it can be so easy just to get frustrated and to feel like you're doing everything wrong and feel like you're not being a good puppy parent. But I promise you, you are doing absolutely fine. It's not you, it's them. <laughs> I also feel like they really pick up on your energy and I noticed that you know if I would get frustrated with him if I 
would just just be frustrated with him, like, you know, weeing everywhere, not listening to me, not picking things up. He would have bad days sometimes, he'd just be a nightmare. On those days, he would really pick up on my energy, and on the days where I was just super chill, just working from home, you know, really relaxed, he would definitely mirror that. And so, um, I really do think that they, they do read your energy and they kind of absorb the environment that you're in, so even more reason to be patient and to be calm. One thing that I would often do is whenever I would get a little bit frustrated, I'd just watch a YouTube video and um, kind of research, you know, the specific thing that I was struggling with, and it would always make me feel way better. they just give me a little bit of a confidence boost um, give me a few tips and so I do recommend doing that and I'll leave a few links in the description box to some YouTube like, dog trainers that I um, I really like to follow and I really like to watch so yeah top number one is just be patient you know they are babies they are so small their brains are so small they're developing they're learning everything every day and they also forget things they're so young right I promise they will learn, you know, puppies, for example, they bite like crazy at the beginning and it honestly feels like it's never ending when you've got like bite marks all over your hands and all over your clothes and they're, they're Puppy teeth are so sharp and when they're just biting everything, it really hurts, but I promise you, like, that phase, it does not last forever. You've just got to be patient, okay? So tip number two is to um, start training immediately. Now we did this and I'm really, really glad that we did. I kind of had mixed feedback about this. Some people were like, you know, great, amazing, you're, you're teaching him straight away. Other people on like Instagram were like, you shouldn't be training him yet. It's, it's He's too young and it's, you know, too scary for him. It's a big change. You should hold off on the training. Um, we decided to train him from day one. As soon as we got him, we started setting the boundaries. We started teaching him things and actually worked really well. And I think that training is such a fun exercise for you and for them. It's a really, really good bonding exercise. It's a great way to kind of establish trust between you. And, you know, you can just start shaping your dog basically so when we first got him we taught him you know things like sit down roll over we taught him to wait very early on and actually wait is probably the one that he's the best at he's so good at wait and um, a lot of people you know call this stay and we just say wait um, and what we'd also do is kind of associate hand movements with the uh, commands as well so for example with the wait command often I'll just do this and he knows to sit and wait um, and so I do find it really useful actually kind of having a hand movement as well just if you know you're in an environment where they can't hear you or it's a quiet environment or you've got you know the baby sleeping or whatever it's good to have different ways just to kind of get their attention and guide them and tell them what to do. I would also highly suggest making meal times into training sessions um, and that way if you do that you've got three guaranteed training sessions two or three guaranteed training sessions every single day so our routine with Fino is when it's um, dinner time um, we say that it is din dins if he's gonna wake up no <laughs> uh, we say that it's din dins and he knows what that means so he comes to his bowl and we'll put his food down and he knows that he's not allowed to touch his food until we say that it's okay so he'll generally come he'll give it a sniff just to see what he's having and then he looks to us and then we'll do a few you know bits of training we'll tell him to go in between we'll tell him to heal we'll tell him to go sit on the sofa sit down give us high five whatever we'll do like a few rounds of training and then after that we tell him it's okay he can go and eat his food and I'm really glad that we taught him this like from the beginning uh, whenever it was meal time we would get him to sit uh, and go down and then we would tell him that it's okay to eat obviously at the beginning he would just try and just go for it straight away but we wanted to just establish those boundaries and now with food he's really good he doesn't beg he doesn't just go and grab food he doesn't take anything from the counter because he always looks to us to see whether or not we can have it even if we're given a treat and um, we'll put a treat in front of him and he'll look at us like so can I have it um, and then we'll give him permission so I really recommend doing that actually and um, especially now that he's bigger you know he can just go and he could go and grab something from the side if he wanted to but he doesn't because he knows he has to get permission first. So yeah, the training from the beginning I think is so important and training is really fun, especially when you know you're giving them loads of praise and you're celebrating. It's fun for you and it's fun for them and I just find it so, so rewarding. Tip number three is to be strict and think ahead. I know how difficult it is to be strict when you've got a super, super cute tiny little puppy and they've got like their puppy dog eyes. I know how hard it is to be strict, but I promise you, it will pay off if you are. One thing that we try to do is we only say the command once. So if we tell him to sit, 
he basically, he has to do it. We don't move until he completes the command. At, at the beginning, like he just wouldn't like to sit down. And sometimes it would take him literally like a minute to go down. And we would just wait for the whole minute until he would do it. We would wait and then he would get his treat. We'd say it once. Normally like they hear, right? It's kind of selective hearing with dogs. You don't need to repeat the command 10 times. They know what you're asking them to do. A lot of the time they're just testing you and um, just to see whether you're okay first. And I'm like, I stick to my guns. I'm like, nope, I'm like, I've asked you to do this command. You are gonna do it and we're gonna sit here and wait until you do. Um, I'm actually way, way stricter than I thought I would be, but I feel like it's paid off and um, he's you know, really good and really responsive. But I think it's important to kind of think ahead and think, you know, what is it gonna be like when we travel? What is it gonna be like when he is a year old and he is jumping up at everyone? Or what is it gonna be like when, um, you know, he goes and grabs food off people? Like all these things, they're really cute when they're puppies, but they grow out of that puppy phase very, very quickly. So if there's any bad habits that you've got to nip it in the bud, you've got to be strict from the very beginning. Don't be afraid to be strict with your dog. You know, you are the master. You are the one that's guiding them and telling them what to do. It's not the other way around. And ultimately, you know, dogs want to please you. They want, they want your praise. They want your love and so you know when they do the right behavior that's how they get praise and love and I think it's actually really useful too to establish routines for everything so I mentioned the routine that we have at mealtime um, for example when he comes in from the garden he knows uh, to sit and wait um, the command that we say is clean and so he sits at the door and then we come over with a towel and he puts his paws up and uh, we give his paws a clean which you know in the summertime it's not that crucial because it's not really wet or dirty outside in the winter time when it's rainy or when it's snowy obviously we can't have him running in with dirty paws onto our nice white sofa so having those routines is really important we started establishing them from the very beginning and you know with establishing these routines with training like you've got to do it a lot of times you can't just ask them to do it twice and expect them to get it you've literally got to do it 10 times and then later on that day 10 times again and then the next day and the next day and the way that you know they learn is through consistency and through routines and through practice and just doing it over and over again so tip number four is to not be with your dog all the time and i know how difficult that is when they are cute little puppies and you want to be with them all the time and you want to be giving them attention you want to be seeing what they're doing but i think it's really important that your dog has a space somewhere in the house where they can't see you because if they can see you all the time they're always going to want your attention they're going to be used to seeing you all the time you are going to be their comfort but when you leave and when you go out then you're not really going to know what to do because you're not going to be there and a lot of people that have messaged me recently have said that you know their dog is in the living room their dog is next to their desk somewhere that they can see them all the time and they're getting really bad separation anxiety um, and one thing that I've been suggesting is like just move the crate move it into the bedroom move it into the hallway move it somewhere where they can't see you and we've had a lot of success with this because Fino's crate is actually in the laundry area and um, it's upstairs it's kind of out of the way of us and um, he's really good with being left on his own and I think that's a lot down to the fact that he's not used to seeing us all the time and so often we'll just put him in his crate area he doesn't like go in his crate all the time now we still have it up but um he really just we just use it mostly for travel but he does like it in there he has this area it's like kind of gated off um, but he's not used to seeing us all the time and so when we leave he's kind of fine you know he's fine on his own he's very self-sufficient he's not totally reliant on seeing us and watching us all the time and um, obviously every dog is different i do really recommend crate training i just think it's such a great way to keep your dog safe um to know that they're okay know that they're not damaging anything nothing can hurt them and it just gives you peace of mind like especially when we travel as well like i don't know what we'd do if we didn't have the crate because say we go to a nice hotel and we want to go for dinner we want to leave the room like i like knowing that he's not gonna you know randomly destroy a piece of furniture like he's never done that before but you never know, right? And for him, like his crate really is his safe place as well. And so when he's in there, he's happy, he sleeps, he feels safe. Dogs really like having like a safe, dark space to be in. And so, yeah, I personally think crate training is very, very useful for them and for you. I don't think it's cruel whatsoever. You know, dogs really like having a safe space that's there. So I'd recommend having like a blanket over the top and um, just to keep it nice and dark. So there's not really any distractions. And it's also a good place just 
for them to just calm down and also a place that's theirs and that's solely theirs, right? So my fifth and final tip, I wanted to keep this video nice and short and sweet, but it's actually gone on for quite long. And um, my final tip is to be consistent and repeat everything over and over again. You know, you're waking up now. <laughs> you see how he's lying? He's lying with his ass to me. His belly in the air. Um, yeah, consistency and repeating things is so, so important. And I feel like that applies to everything, whether it is... <laughs> Do you mind? <laughs> Whether that is their mealtime routine or, you know, the routine of going to bed or with training or even things like, you know, introducing them to new things that they're scared of, like being rep rep repetitive? Repetitive. Being repetitive is so, so important. So for example, you know, at the beginning, Fino really hated the vacuum cleaner. He was so afraid of the vacuum cleaner and the hair dryer. And um, I just thought, you know what, these are two things that we're gonna need to do all the time. We're gonna need to vacuum the house. We're gonna need to blow dry him. Um, and so we just kept doing it over and over again. Uh, we would do it every day, we'd vacuum close to him, we'd get him used to it, we would blow dry him and um, give him lots of treats and give him lots of plays and eventually he got used to it. It's to remember that you get to set the rules. I think it's very easy to allow your dog to kind of um, rule you and you know if they don't like doing something it's very easy to change your behaviour and think well you know if they don't like the vacuum cleaner then I'm just not going to vacuum when they're around for example but you know it doesn't really work that way and you are the master especially when they're a puppy you get to mould your dog and you get to create the dog that you want through training, through routine, through consistency, through practice. And so, you know, you, you get to set the rules about how your dog lives and how you live. You really get to set the rules. You get, oh, hello. <laughs> you get to set whatever rules you want just through being consistent and with practice. And, you know, don't get disheartened if you're teaching them something or you're teaching them not to jump or that you're teaching them not to bark at you and they don't get it first time. Like dogs respond to consistency. So, you know, if for example, you're walking them and they're pulling, um, what we tend to do if Fino gets pulley is we just stop whenever he pulls and then we'll walk again and as soon as he pulls, we stop. We'll walk again, as soon as he pulls, we stop. And we might do this 10 times in a row, but pretty soon he understands that if he pulls, that means that we stop and we don't go anywhere. And then as soon as he starts walking well again and he's not pulling and the lead is slack, we'll give him loads of treats and loads of praise. Um, and he understands that, okay, that's how I need to walk in order to get treats and praise and in order to continue going where we're going. But it really is just a game of consistency and like, you know, don't feel like, oh, they're not getting it. They're never gonna get it. I promise they will. You just have to be patient and be consistent and just keep up with those routines and just keep doing things over and over and over again. So that is it for my tips. I really, really hope that you have found this video useful. If there's any questions that you have, please let me know in the comment box down below. I'm not a dog trainer. I wanna just kind of state that. Um, these tips are all just from experience, from what we've learned with Fino, you know, from the videos that we've watched and from the things that we've impl implemented and the things that we've tried with him. These are all things that, that we've had a lot of success with. Fino's now woken up and he's got, he's got a lot of energy and he wants my attention. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the red subscribe button if you wanna see more of my videos. And and um, hopefully I will see you in my next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Say bye, Fino. Bye. <laughs>